Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company. We're in my garden after the crazy Hillary thunderstorm, hurricane madness that happened, which actually wasn't that bad. But we're taking a look at the garden because I want to talk a little bit about butterflies. We're really lucky to have tons of butterflies that frequent our garden and our farm. And I'm going to tell you the steps that we've taken to make that happen. But before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. Okay, so if you take a look around, there's tons of butterflies. And it's actually really hard to catch on camera because they flutter so much. But we sat out here the other day and we actually counted and within the span of 15 minutes I was able to count over 30 butterflies. I know what you guys are thinking, how do you know you didn't count the same one twice? I don't. But the point is, is we have a lot of butterflies that frequent our garden and there's things that we've done over the years of having our organic garden to make that happen. I will say that butterflies and, and uh, pollinators is a really actually kind of divisive subject now, which is crazy, they're, they're butterflies, but people are very opinionated about the steps that you need to take to have a butterfly safe garden. And so I'm gonna talk about what I've done there are definitely different opinions and ways in which you can get there, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about the basics. So first thing, if we look around at the garden, the first thing I want people to just recognize is that it's, it's a little wild, and the most important thing that you see is that it's diverse. So we are not planting the only one crop here. We have tons of different crops in this garden. And the other thing that you're gonna see a lot of is flowers, tons and tons of flowers. Now these are not just California natives or plants that are the first thing you think of when you think of pollinator plants. We have all kinds of stuff. In fact, we have herbs that we've let go to flower and go to seed. Those are actually some of the best plants for butterflies and pollinators. It's just simply letting your parsley, cilantro, your basil, all of your herbs go to flower. They will attract so many pollinators and butterflies. And then what will happen that's really fun is it'll actually go to seed. So this is fennel and it's gone to flower and then it goes to seed here and you can harvest that seed, you can eat it, you can do fun stuff with it, but we usually just kind of let it fall back into the ground, which means it comes back every year. It's a great way to have a little bit of lazy gardening. The other thing that you're gonna see is we have tons of sunflowers, which are a really beautiful and great crop for pollinators and butterflies. And then the other thing that you're gonna see is that we have milkweed. Now, before everybody freaks out, I'm gonna show you that we have tropical milkweed in our garden. And I know, I know, I know, I know, everybody calm down. It's a very uh, incredible thing people get very heated about. Um, but this is uh, tropical milkweed, but we cut it down every single fall so that it is down to the ground and then it comes back. The concern with tropical milkweed in our particular climate is it can grow year round all year and that can actually confuse the migration pattern of butterflies because a food source that typically is not there stays all year long. So again, we cut this back so in a couple weeks or even a month I'm going to chop this down to the ground and then it'll come back after the seasonal rains in the springtime. On our farm we actually do seed production of the native California milkweed, which also comes back every year, and it's really beautiful and great for the butterflies. So number one, in your garden, if you want butterflies, if you want pollinators, you have to have a diverse garden, and you've got to have flowers, all the flowers that you can think of. The other thing that's really important is the way in which you treat your garden. So this is an organic garden, but we even take it a step beyond that. And this is a garden where we don't spray anything. Um, we only use the bare minimum things if we have to. Sometimes we have to use sluggo. Maybe we might have to use a uh, insecticide soap, but we keep it very minimal. The other thing that we do is we spray late in the evening, close to sunset so that we can disrupt insects and pollinators the least with anything that we use. Now I'll actually show you, if you come over here, look at this. Look at all these insects on here. This happens naturally on many different types of milkweed. Now, most people might start flipping out and thinking, oh no, I gotta spray this, I gotta get rid of this. This is actually part of the life cycle that is um, insects in the garden. You can see that these guys are actually feeding on the aphids. Hey, there we go. So there's babies in here. See little babies? 
And I know it's kind of gross, but they're not posing any other threat in the garden. They're gonna eat the seeds in here, which I don't care because this plant is gonna put out so many seeds that it doesn't matter, I can share. So in your garden, if you want butterflies, you're going to have to have other insects that are less attractive, like these guys here. They may be pretty gross looking, but they're all a part of the, the uh, life cycle of insects that you're gonna find in a pollinator friendly garden. Okay, so we've got this big wall of flowers here and let's talk a little bit about why you want butterflies. Obviously they're fun to look at. They're pollinators, which means they're gonna move pollen from plant to plant. And in a vegetable garden, that's very important because the pollination of a crop gives you more fruit. In fact, if we look over here at our squash, you can see here we've got a bunch of different squash flowers and pollen actually has to move from the male to the female plant to give you a fruit. Pollinators like butterflies help do that. But the other thing that's really important about having butterflies in the garden is that they are going to be a part of diverse insects which help give you an equilibrium when we're talking about uh, insect management. So you have to have good insects and you have to have bad insects so they can fight each other and you can have a little bit of an equilibrium in the garden. Butterflies are part of that. So it's important to remember that in a vegetable garden, you can't just plant your crops that need pollinators or butterflies to thrive and just hope that they come. You need to create an ecosystem in your garden where they can be at home all year round and all the time so that when you have crops that need pollination, that happens naturally. Now, another thing that's really important is that, you know, we love the beautiful, iconic uh, monarch butterfly, but there's lots of different types of butterflies and there's lots of different types of insects. Some of them are ugly, but they all play a role in your garden. In fact, the white butterfly that you see that flitters around and the really pretty, like super chartreuse lime green butterfly that you see here in, in zone nine and 10, those guys are gorgeous, but you know what they actually are? Those are the butterflies that are gonna lay eggs on your fall crops that are gonna turn into leaf-eating caterpillars that are then gonna destroy your fall crops. So they do good things and they do bad things. They don't know what your agenda is. They can't be like, oh, this is your broccoli. I'm not gonna lay any eggs on here. They don't care. Luckily, you can use row cover. It's a very simple way to keep them off your crops and you can prevent that life cycle from happening. But my point is, whether it's your, whether it's your beautiful broccoli, your gorgeous sunflowers, or your squash, the ways in which you create a garden which butterflies and pollinators can thrive is number one, diverse planting. You need to have flowers blooming year round so that there's a pollen source for them and so that they can thrive. Number two, you can't spray anything, or if you do, you need to look for organic options and you need to be very selective and very careful in your timing in which you use those. And number three, you need to make sure that you have water in the garden in for zone nine and 10, irrigation, because these flowers cannot bloom in our dry climate if there's not some type of moisture year round for them to thrive. The goal of a pollinator is to get to the nectar. In that process, they're gonna come in contact with pollen, they're gonna move from one plant to another, and they're gonna make more plant babies for you. That's how that whole process works. Now, bees, butterflies, moths, all kinds of insects can be pollinators. It's not just the beautiful monarch butterfly that we see all over Instagram. It's any insect that's gonna move pollen from one plant to another. So please, I encourage you to have a garden that's thriving and diverse and can support an insect population of both the beautiful and the not so beautiful insects that make a garden great.